Today, three daily actions to 2x or maybe even 3x your business. On the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. <laughs> Welcome to the <laughs> podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 149 and you can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, uh, there is a lot going on in the world right now. Thank you very much. And we want you to stay tuned and abreast of everything that's going on in the world. But at the same time, you need to move your business forward. So we want you to focus on something else besides all the chaos that's happening now. Focus on your business and keep on moving down the road. So what do we got going on today, Jan O'Brien? That's a nice setup, Matt. I definitely wanted to start the year out with setting some good habits and we've been talking about on the podcast all these things to get to end your year and and get through into the new year but as i go back and look at all of the things i've shared through the years i came to the conclusion that these three things i want to share with you today are things i have been consistently working on struggling at times with but i get that if i also do these three things i'm going to share with you that i am committed to doing this year then our, my business in real estate and even in our coaching business, I really do believe is gonna is gonna two or do, we'll do two or three more times the business. Whatever our goal is, we're gonna hit it and we're gonna exceed it. Right. At, at least if you don't want to two extra business, you'll at least hit your numbers if you do these three things. So that's what I want to jump into today. Awesome. We're gonna cover anything else today. We're just gonna talk about this. Let's just talk Nothing about that. You know what? Let's keep people focused on one thing at a time. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, one thing at a time is three things. So three daily actions that if you make this commitment to, let me tell you what they are up front and then we'll we'll dive in deeper. I got some great show notes for you today, including a lot of links to help you actually get to the how of doing these three things, okay? So the first one, it's not going to be news to anyone who listens to the podcast or listens to anything that I have to say. It's your morning well-being practice. 100% have to start your day with a in a positive mindset. Number two, it's being an industry expert. And I'm going to define what I mean by that. And if you're listening and you're not just a real estate person, these three things I'm talking about today work for any business. I'm obviously going to be sharing real estate related how-tos and resources for you. That's number two, being a real estate expert. And number three, one to two hours of lead generation activities five days a week. All right. I know it doesn't sound like anything new, but I'm going to share with you that is literally what you need to do. And if you've made a commitment right now to follow these three things, I'm going to go into the details right now, you will 100% meet and exceed your goals. I really do believe you can 2X your business because I know what happens. I coach a bunch of people. I try to stick to these things myself. When I am on track doing these, I am always dialed in and business is coming my way. Uh When I'm not doing these things and I get back to them, I can see the impact. When I'm not doing them, then I'm I have no excuses because I can understand why it's not happening. Okay? You can certainly tr- you can certainly track your business and you know what happens in those ebbs, right? You know what you were not doing during those times. Absolutely. Now I want to spend more time on two and three because we've done a lot on this podcast about your morning. I'm calling it your well-being practice. Okay, so this is all I want to say, and there are links in the show notes today to go back and get some more resources, and I'll I'll hit them very quickly now. Now, this is what this means. I get up early every day, okay? And I am building a habit of not picking up my phone Uh and immediately looking at what it is. So I don't want to roll out of bed anymore. I roll out of bed and I will tell you what I do. But the, the keys to this morning routine is for you to figure out what works for you. I'm going to share what works for me. And I'm always evolving and growing, but it always comes to two or three activities that work for me. Now, here's what we're talking about. You've got to figure out how you start every day for you so that you get in a powerful, positive mindset. That's That's all I'm talking about doing. you got to figure it out. 
And, it, and it, what it means is not turning on the TV, going to the computer, starting to jump into all the things and tasks that you need to do. You've got to take care of yourself. That's what this is all about. So for me, it's meditation. That's what I did this morning. I have a go-to. I have a ton of different meditation apps. and But I particularly love, over the years, Kelly Howell, Brain Sync. I just listened to one of those this morning. Yeah. Um, I am co- I'm currently also, if I don't do that, and I had some interruptions this morning, so I have to do my yoga practice later. I would have liked to have done meditation and my yoga practice that is very quick and easy. And I discovered it. I shared it with you, Matt. And I have a link to it. It's not too late to start. It's only January 8th as we record this today. So I was doing some things on YouTube because we're studying how to do better on YouTube here at the WBNL Coaching. We are. We'll talk about that later. We'll start sharing what we're learning and things that you can do too should you want to break out and do more video this year, which we hope some of you will join us on that journey. But anyway, I was just checking trending topics on uh, YouTube at the beginning of the year on um, January 1st, January 2nd even, I think I found this. And it was Yoga with Adrian. And it was number two trending on yoga. Um, I mean, on uh, YouTube. And I think it's because everybody was looking for it was the beginning of the right. year. Right? Exactly. Matt, what, right. What, let me get motivated. What do I need to go yeah. do? And so basically this lady's brilliant. But I'm going to tell you something that was powerful. Just a little bit of a sidebar here was that impressed me was that when I found her on the second, I think she had 4.5 million follower uh, subscribers. She now has over 9 million. That's what trending on YouTube will do for you. But anyway, super powerful. There's a link in the in the show notes. It's called Breath, a 30-day yoga journey with Adrian. So I have a link to that. Highly recommend it. Very powerful. Even if you haven't been like me, haven't been in yoga for a while, it's awesome. And there's modifications. I'm feeling it and I'm loving it. I was just going to say, you little sore? Say again? Yeah. It's, I, love sore. I have sore, but I like it. So um, meditation, yoga, or a walk or other exercise is what works for me. Do you do anything like this, Matt? Yeah, I do. I, I have a routine, absolutely, that, that, that gets me going in the right mind frame in the morning. And it's really simple. It's the same type of thing, um, but a little less structured, really. But I, I'll, I'll roll out of bed. I usually go downstairs. We have a nice little breakfast nook. The sun is beautiful in there. It's morning sun. I have a little chair in there I sit down on. I have a cup of coffee. I'll have my yogurt or breakfast bar or whatever I'm going to have. I have an app that I listen to. I am a big fan of Rain. Rain is a calming kind of uh, creative the noise for me and it's a, I think it's called rainy mood is the app that I have yeah. and you can turn that on and have a little rain in the background you can turn there's a bird part of it you can turn birds on so there's some birds tweeting so it's a little background so this is, you do this just to get yourself like in yeah. a good so you know, I think you know what I mean get your my mind going right. to where I can start creating my mind frame not what is already on my mind it starts letting me just you know explore the things I so love it there. I have my cup of coffee. Usually my, uh, you know, one or two of both the cats will come on in. They'll sit around there with me. And, you know, this isn't like maybe a 10, 15 minute ritual, you know, that much time. But it allows me to focus uh, and really start thinking about what the day is going to uh you know, present for me. And I also really will go through, these are the things I want to accomplish today. So there'll be two or three things on that list, you know, because Jan and I don't like to get, you know, a list that's too long is never going to be accomplished. So, you know, you, you keep it short to the things you want to get done. And more times than not, I'll get those things accomplished in the day because I know from the very start, those are the things I want to get done. And yeah. one thing you, you know, I always talk about is you knock those things off as fast as you possibly can. And then sometimes by 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, you're like, huh, I'm done. So here's the thing. You can, either be, you can either be done and pat yourself on the back or, which we hardly ever just stop, right? So then you can go on and start accomplishing more. So that's my routine. Now, I, I love this uh, idea of, of adding, and I'm going to add that those, those couple points to the show notes here because I'm talking about whatever it is to get you in this positive mindset. It might be reading something. It could be whatever. Yeah. And again, I, I'm a fan of Miracle Morning and the Savers and Hal Elrod, and we've got links to our previous podcasts on this. But if you do whatever your practice is for you, a little routine, even if it's 10 or 15 minutes of breathing or listening to rain app or a rain thing that I love that, Matt, then you can go get yourself organized for the day. Or some people like to organize themselves for the day before. Don't take the first hour of your day wasting it. In my in my view of, you know, you got to get yourself ready. So I love that point of get a couple things on your massive list of things to do that you're going to work on. Um, but but also the other key to this, and, and I'll talk about this next week because we're going to talk about some skill set, or we're going to talk about this in a little bit here, one of these keys of your of your um, power things that you need to do each day so you can generate more business. You know, you should always do that and then 
to Matt's point, you know, you always have a recipe for what you're going to do each day. That's going to get you some more business in your pipeline, but you also, and not, but, and you want to take maybe two things off your list of a hundred things to do and get those things done, right? That's how we're going to move ourselves forward. Okay. So first one, create a well-being practice that works for you and just make that be the start of your day. Cause if you don't do something like this and you roll out with the stress of whatever you went to bed with and, uh, or if you were listening, especially right now, watching uh, what's happening and yep. news and our news cycle, and you got to do something to reset your brain, reset your your own mind, uh, and and get things going. Okay, and then it's going to let the day carry on and be more productive. This one thing added to these next two is what's going to help you exceed double or triple your income this That's year. Right. If you want to do all right. The next one is being the industry expert. So for us being a real estate expert, and it's not just about real estate. Now, here's why I'm going to say you need to do this. Number one, it's your career. <laughs> it's your J-O-B. If you're chosen real estate to be the thing you do to generate income for yourself and your family, then you owe it to yourself, let alone your customers and clients, to be the expert. This is just so basic, but there's so many people who do not know the industry. They're winging it. So this is the year that you have got to stop that. I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to tell you how to become a better expert. Why do you want to do it? Knowledge is confidence. When you have more knowledge and understanding of this chosen industry of yours, you're going to be confident. That's You've right. got to master all all facets of the real estate industry. You've got to understand housing statistics and trends nationally and locally. You know, I've been doing this business a long time, Matt, and I'm only going to, I'm going to tell you that I feel, I've always understood the processes of real estate as a broker. I feel an expert in the laws and the regulations. By the way, these are all the areas that I'm talking about that you've got to be an expert in. Me personally, because of my experience and the positions that I've been in of leadership, I stayed up on that. I trained on that. I created CE courses. A lot of you go to the CE courses and you don't even really listen to them. You're just checking a box so you can get something so you can renew your license. But do you really, could you sit down and explain to somebody uh, how to do a 1031 exchange, the ins and outs of probate? You know, yeah, maybe how to do a listing and a sale A to Z. So we've got that part. But what I started to say is I only in this past year, and I, ha and I owe this to David Squire back in March, May, April, rather. Right. April, when we did our 30 day work from right. home challenge, uh -huh. um, is when I got excited about understanding the stats. Now, did I, could I spew off average sales prices? Yes. But I became a student of the stats when he had us looking at them weekly. And I started to see it more. And all of a sudden, I was a little bit more on fire to learn more about all of that. So I'm going to yep. share with you what I did and some things that you can do. So really, right? I mean, for years I could say, I understand the stats. Now I really understand because I have been finding resources that I stay up on to make me uh, learn what I need to do. So I feel comfortable talking to people about it. All right. Yeah, so I've, 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 I saw that switch in you. I saw, and I, I have listened to the way that you explain and talk about that process uh, or have watched it grow over the last 10 months now. So it's it, you, what you're saying here is absolutely the truth. And that was a real eye opening moment. The best part of that entire 30 day challenge was the discovery of those statistics. So absolutely. So industry expert means you understand not just housing trends locally and nationally, but you understand what's going on in the economy, in the news, in, in, in finances. And, and obviously right now it's COVID-19 and stimulus and all that. You've got to understand this because it impacts our industry. It uh -huh. impacts what people are choosing to do to buy or sell. You have to become a student. And then an expert. Being and, the and clients want to know that. They, that's what they want to know. And you're absolutely right. The confidence that comes off and the uh, the, the uh, credibility that you have when you actually understand you it is tenfold. If you you're, reading my notes. you're reading my notes because the next bullet point on my <laughs> notes says when yeah. you have all that confidence because you're a student of that and you're doing it, then you are the trusted advisor. You're the go to person that clients call. Now, you know, and then you can be your conversation starters. Everybody wants to know what's happening in the real estate industry or what's going to happen to the value of their home. But when you have all this knowledge because you're on it every day and I'm going to show you how now, then you feel confident, which helps you build that trusted advisor role that you are, uh, then people will start referring to you. It also 
is going to empower you like it did me back in uh, starting in May and June to create content around it. Back back with our team is when I think May was the first time I started doing um, monthly market reports. Right. Okay, And I'm telling you, it's empowering. And so then you then could be creating content that you can put out on social and on your blogs, which could lead to with consistency, if it's good quality content, other people reaching out to you. It could be, uh, I've seen people, it hasn't happened to me yet, but I've seen people where the press finds your stuff and they want to get a quote from you. That's what I mean by being a, a, an industry expert, okay? And getting additional exposure because you're willing to add your opinion, your knowledgeable opinion to what's happening in our country, in the world, in the economy, in finances, in real estate, what's happening, okay? So it's obviously, you know, everybody's pretty good about learning how to do the transactions and not as good as you should, though. I'm going to say that just based on my experience in the last That's year back true. in the real estate business. You're either all in or you're not, Okay. And uh, that's going to help you with that. Now, how do you do it? Well, let's talk about housing stats and, and, and trends. And how do you stay on top of that? What resources can you use? Number one, daily. Log into your MLS. Every MLS has a uh, what's going on, a stats. So you can look at them daily, weekly. You can go back a month. you got to just look at that. That should be a daily practice. Once you're done with your morning stuff and you're going to jump in and do what we're going to talk about next, you should be looking at the stats. Know what's going on. Um, monthly. Everybody, every association out here statewide, locally has some type of report they put together. You've got to go find it. Now, you just don't have the report sent to you. You have got to learn. And if you don't know how to do it, get with somebody who does. You need to learn how to interpret the statistics, the trends, and be able to explain them to people in a way that they, the average person will understand that's, it. That's the key. That's the key that most of us that I had the flip on. I always kind of understood it. But because I put a little more energy and effort to, into it, I started to feel comfortable in voicing my opinion on where things are going. Nobody can be the predictor, the prognosticator. We can all we can all get better at it, but we don't know what's going to happen a month from now, two months from now. That's right. But it's a very cool place to be. So that's how you can study that. Local title companies, find the source in your community, in your area. Find the source of where is this information. Sit down with somebody and get somebody to help you understand it. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, keeping current matters was a game changer for me. I yeah. look at keeping current matters every single day. They have a daily blog that they put out that generally has great content in it. That's just a little bit about what's happening that you could uh, put on a blog. You can copy it, put it on your blog, share it on social. The second thing that they do that I love is a monthly market report, a monthly housing and uh, economy report, economic report designed for us. So Dave Childers is talking about, here's what's going on. Here's what you need to know. Here's how you can interpret it for your clients. Not only can you watch this, you can download the slides. You can download his audio script. You can download the script and look at it so you can understand what he just told you in all the charts. This is what I do every single month. I pull out the parts I want. I go get my local stats. This is just on, on stats, okay, and housing trends. And I put it in and I record a video and we make it a blog and then we post it all over the place. You know, the beauty of that really of, of keeping current matters is that national snapshot is so important because people are hearing about that. Right. And they're hearing a little bit about the local market at the same time. And they are usually different. Right. In right. a lot of ways. Right. So that's where you can really come in and, and hone the skill and be the expert because you're you are taking all that information that they're hearing from all these different places and really bringing it down to what's happening in their neighborhood. And that's the power of that. I mean, I swear to God, if you can't get if you can't win at the table when you're you're doing your listing presentation more because of your knowledge of the market and how right. to price the home, then that alone is going to get you the extra two to three times the business. I mean, so I'm just going to give you a couple more resources of what to help you on, because uh, and by the way, the link that we have is our affiliate, our referral link. Um, why we, why I want to want you to go to our show notes and click on it is not only will you you get the uh, you can get a twenty five dollar gift card by signing up it gives us a free month free you you can just get the twenty five dollar a month one I use the I do the forty dollar because I like the social posts and I like the um, the videos that you can get as an upgrade but you can start with the twenty five and get the market reports every month and get weekly uh, daily blog posts and other content that you can do. Now, as far as being up to speed with real estate transactions, laws, and regulations, that's that comes with experience. That comes with education, seeking out, maybe getting some other uh, certifications. There's a certification for everything and types and niches, uh, courses. I also want to say that there, it's very important that you're with 
you either uh, consider if you're newer in the business or you just want to have additional support. You got to have a broker that you can count on, uh, that you can get your questions answered. Um, you, know, you can look at mentorship, coaching, um, joining a team sometimes can help you with all these things. So you have a, a support system to gain more experience. One of the things that benefits of being in a team environment, like for us in a team, is that we're always sharing and a good brokerage is sharing lessons learned. So you can learn from someone else having some challenges so that you don't have to go through that yourself. All right. This is all part of understanding the process. Okay. Now, the last part of this, the second one, which is so important, being the industry expert, uh, I just have links to a bunch of other resources. And this is what I'm going to recommend that you do. Choose the resources that resonate with you. So this is everything from Inman to Riz Media to Realtor.com, Housing Wire, CNBC. Um, you can either have alert set so that you get these notifications. Um, you could create a, a daily check that you could do. I'll give you an example. Um, I, I subscribe to the Inman now because I'm more into knowing what's going on. At first, I didn't like paying for that, but now I like it. Uh, and, and I like it be, because it, I just get the alerts. So I'll get a notification. So, for example, yesterday, the mortgage rates went down even lower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they went to 265 now, when you have something like that happen and you're in tune and you're not seeking it out, the information's coming to you and it's a newsworthy thing, this immediately can turn into a quick video that you could send yeah. to people. You could go post something about it. You, you know, it just gives you so much content and so much information and things that you uh so anyway, I uh, I just think it's so powerful. So I'm going to give you a lengthy list of links in the show notes today. Uh, go pick what you like. I decided to go back to something um, that I'm I'm going to go do right now, and I'll put in the link, Matt. It's creating a news feed. So mm -hmm. I used to when blogs first came out, I had like an RSS feeder, sure. and I did a little research over the weekend, and I think I found the one I want to use. What I like, it's like all the content you want to subscribe to is curated and the latest things are popping up and it saves you from opening, um, you know, 10 different websites. Yeah. So there are places that you can curate the content and have 10, 15 feeds come in and mm -hmm. all the areas and all you have to do is scan and just stay on top of it. Right. Uh, we're not talking about hours of your time. You just need to stay on what's on top of what's happening. OK, so hopefully that motivates you. I'm motivated. I hope you can sense it because. I'm like, this is so important. Yeah. I, you know what? You know why I'm just like blown away why I'm making a big deal about this is so many people don't know this. Right. They say they're in the real estate business and they cannot tell you what's happening. They can't tell you what's happening and they don't necessarily care. So I'm speaking to those of you that really want to kill it in 2021 and you want to crush your business to hit your goals and really take care of people and be excited and passionate about your business. You're going to start with that morning routine that works for you. You're going to be the industry expert. I just gave you a bunch of ways to do it. And then the very most important piece of your day is to not fill it up with a million things that are not going to generate business. That's what uh -huh. most of us do. So your third and most important thing is you've got to have at least one to two hours of lead generation activities in your calendar. Let me walk you through the key points here. It has to be in your calendar. It's got to be blocked out five days per week. It's not negotiable. Okay. And I'm even going to say, even if you could squeeze out 30 minutes and do it daily, it's going to make an impact. I'm going to set the goal for one to two hours, but 30 minutes at a minimum. Block it out, non negotiable, meaning it's an appointment with yourself. And you're going, when somebody calls and says, Can you do something at 10 o'clock? And it's the time that you have for business building, you're going to say, I have an appointment, but I'm available at 11. Now, if for some reason, now you're going to use your common sense. If that's a million dollar transaction and they can only see you at 10 o'clock, of course, you're going to keep that. Yeah. But don't let that be your excuse. Every time something easy comes along to cancel the appointment with yourself, you do it. So if that happens, just put it someplace else. It, I can't do it from nine to 10 today. I'm going to do it from four to five. OK, so make it happen. Um, get an accountability partner. Share your goals. Uh, we shared about using Zoom accountability that really holds you accountable when you get on a zoom call with two or three people and you got to make your phone calls or your follow-ups okay set daily or weekly goals and share that with a with a partner or accountability partner your team leader whoever so it could be x number of calls or texts x x number of personalized emails i'm even saying personalized emails some people prefer to to, to talk via email or direct message 
How many uh, video texts or emails are you sending? How many conversations is your goal today or, or, or this week? And then how many appointments did you set? Okay, so come up with a formula that says I make five calls to my database each day. I call and then let me go into who can you be calling, right? So in this block of time, I'm saying any income producing activity that will lead to business counts. Okay, so that can be obviously calling sessions to your sphere, leads, farms, expired, FISBO, your niche, distressed properties, whatever you're doing. It could be circle prospecting. You just got a new listing or you just made a sale, calling around those listings. It can be active text conversations. You're yeah. actually talking to a lead or somebody back and forth in a text, but it's not sending a mass text. It's not sending a mass email. It's having one-on-one -on -one, yeah. uh, connections with people. It could be sending a custom video text to follow up with a lead, using video to try to connect with some of the leads that you're generating. Open houses I'm throwing into this bucket if you have done all the steps around your open house to, to make it uh, a very active open house for people to show up. And when you're at the open house and people do not show up, you are making phone calls. OK, that counts. That's a place of business today. You're out at this great open house with the potential to meet somebody. And if nobody shows up for three hours, you got a three hour block of time to call, text and do all the things we're talking about here. Yep. Door knocking falls into this. So you guys get the picture. That to me is how I am encouraging, highly recommending, imploring you if you are true about wanting to accomplish whatever your goals are for 2021, that you do these three things, you will knock it out of the park. You know, it's interesting, Jan, um, just getting back to kind of step number two and becoming the expert and how, you know, you just, you know, in the last year and a half, I've really gotten back into boots on the ground, building a real estate team, knowing what's happening in the marketplace from a from a, a real moment to moment type of situation. What I love about that and to watch kind of your path over the last, you know, since we've known each other for the last eight years um, in real estate, if you're not growing, you're dying. Right. So no matter how long you've been in the business, I mean, for crying out loud, Jen, you've been in the business for almost 30 years, you know, but you are constantly morphing and changing and growing in your business. Business. If you are doing the same thing and it is not working, it is not going to just all of a sudden work tomorrow. You know, you have to keep up with what's going on. You have to continue to grow and you have to build your knowledge base and your skill. And you are always doing that. And that's what makes you not only a successful real estate agent, but also a successful coach. So um, and business partner. Uh, so, you know, that that's a key to this. Right. Is is, yeah. is, is stick st taking stepping out of your comfort zone sometimes and um, and growing. So next week we will get into, there's at least three, there may be four skill sets to, to practice and refine this year that will help you also. So we talked about three activities today, three actions, three commitments in three areas, your personal way you start the day, how you're going to stay educated all the time and be an expert in all facets of this business, including trends and news. Uh, and then just literally, it is probably the one that is that everyone avoids is the last one, which is regularly scheduled daily times that you're generating business, because this is what you want to avoid. Why don't you start the new year out by by setting up these habits and doing them so that you have consistent income all year? The average real estate agent, the average person who's in business for themselves, I don't care what it is they're doing has ups and downs It's a big yep. roller coaster. And it's for one reason only, not consistently keeping things in their pipeline. People get busy. Oh my God, I have five transactions. This is gonna be my best month ever. And then you stay so busy babysitting those transactions, which is what we'll talk about in another day, how systems and help and assistance and so forth can help you streamline your business. But we need to start with the baby steps today. And these are the baby steps. They're big steps. They're not baby steps, actually. They're hmm. big commitments. But if you stay with it, You'll always have people in your pipeline. I don't want you to go have a great month and then it takes 30 days to get somebody else in your pipeline. That's where people get losing in this business. So it's time. It's time. 2021 is the time. We're all embracing that we own businesses. We're business owners. This is not just a nice thing to say anymore. I'm a business owner. I'm embracing these concepts. I'm excited about being an industry expert continuing to know not only just real estate, but know other things that help both of our businesses, because we have two businesses right now. We are practicing real estate 
and we are coaching others on how to do it. Okay, so we look forward to serving you in this coming year with this kind of great content. Um, by the way, this is our podcast. We do this every week. Please subscribe. You can go to any podcast, pretty much any podcast platform. What is your flavor of choice for podcasts from Apple to Google Play to where are, where else are we, Matt? I think we're everywhere. We're on Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio. Yeah. All right. So you can do that. If you're not into podcasts, we also put this up on YouTube. We have a, a YouTube playlist over at WBNL Coaching. Just put WBNL Coaching into YouTube and you'll find us. And if you are uh, getting into YouTube, please subscribe to our channel and share it and, and help us out there. And the last thing I want to say for today is uh, get into our Facebook group. We'll put those in the show notes as well. We have a completely free private Facebook group that's growing. I think we're getting over 150 or so, 160 people maybe. I, mean, I forget where we're at. But this is a place that we go live three days a week in our um, in our Facebook group. So we're excited in the new year to continue to build that community and be part of that mentoring and coaching that you can rely on in different areas. And so on Mondays, I'm going to be doing some type of a business builder tip or coach tip. And we want it to be conversational and kind of Q&A. On Tuesdays, Cosmo or other partner is going to be more about tech or something that's specific to a tool that's going to help you. And on Wednesdays, Matt's doing right now Canva Corner. I can't tell you. He's done. How many of you done now? Every single time he's done one of these, I've learned something. I, I'm so excited about what I've learned in Canva. And I thought I kind of knew Canva, right? And then we do our podcast on Friday. Um, it's not live, but we'll read. We, if you miss it, the video will be in the group and it, it, it'll be on YouTube. So we got a lot going on for you. Take advantage of it. We should be one of those channels you subscribe to, to to get information to help you be, be that and, and maintain that expertise in your industry. Make yep. it a great week, everybody. Yeah, good stuff, Jan O'Brien. So that is a wrap for the WBNL podcast. We're Real Estate and Reality Meet. This was episode 149. You can get all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. And remember, everybody, be forever wandering, but not lost. Mm-hmm.